Hi guys, Adam here. In this video, we're going to make a shot chart um, and be able to interact with it. And this could be for any sport. It could be for basketball, soccer, ice hockey. We're going to do ice hockey uh, in this video. And this is a typical data set that you'll see come from like a software program, uh, an export of sorts. And what we have here is we have a date. We have a type, which is essentially the shot type. And right now we just have goals and on goal. Um, shots for ice hockey. We don't have missed shots or blocked shots or things like that. And what I should mention about this data set before going any further, this is all the shots for 20, uh, 2015 and 16. So in total, I'm going to hold down control and click the down arrow. arrow. We got 73, we got 74,000 rows essentially in this, in this sheet. So we got the date, we got the type of the shot uh, that it is, and there might be other data in here too. Um, right now, this is just shots, like you might have loose puck battles, you might have hits, you might have face-offs, um, essentially a play-by-play -play of a game. But again, we're just looking at shots here. We have a shooter team, or the team that shot the puck. We have against team, or the team that had the puck shot against them. We have the player, who is a member of the shooting team, the person on the shooting team that shot the puck. We have the goalie, uh, the goalie that the puck was shot against. We have the period, the clock time of the period, manpower. Um, for those not familiar with ice hockey, um, it's not always five on five. Um, penalties happen and then players are removed or added to the ice sometimes. So this disting distinguishes the strength or the manpower, the distance or how far away the shot was taken from. And we have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate um, on the ice. A goal zone, which is pretty much where the goal was scored. So, was it was it scored in the bottom left, bottom right, top left, top right, or in the middle of the goal? Um, and only goals will have a goal zone. Shots on goal will not have a goal zone because there was no score. En stands for empty net. Sometimes at the end of a game, a team will take their goalie out and substitute uh, a player that's uh, that can skate around a little bit better um, onto the ice an effort to like come back if they're, if they're down by a goal or two. The downside of that is that the goalie's out of the net and it's easier for the other team to score. So what this, a true in this column indicates that the net was empty or there was no goalie in the net when the goal was scored. Okay, so that's a quick overview of the data set. And I wanna touch on something really important. And we're really gonna focus on these X and Y coordinates um, to pinpoint the locations of these shots. And you need to know the core, how the ice rink is coordinated based on your data set or whatever it is, if it's the basketball court or the soccer field. In other words, what is the range of X values and what is the range of Y values and what do those mean? And now I'm going to stop sharing this and I'm going to share a PowerPoint presentation um, just to go over that really briefly. So here are the X and Y coordinates um, from the program or, or that, that you need to know about the ice hockey rink. The X coordinates range from minus 100 to 100, and those indicate the different sides of the ice. The Y coordinates range from 40 to minus 40, and those represent the, um, the sides of the ice, or the, I guess the, the width of the ice, minus 100 to 100 is the length. Now what we're gonna do is I don't want, I wanna focus on a player and his shots or a group of players and their shots. I don't necessarily wanna see the shots that occur in an entire game, um that's a different type of analysis so what i want is i want a half rink and that's going to be how what my shot chart shot chart looks like it's not going to look like this and what this means from a data perspective is that this minus 100 is gone so it has to come over here because there were still shots taken sorry i'm going back and forth there's still shots taken on this side of the ice but what we want to do is we want to convert the shots taken on this side of the ice to also shots taken on this side of the ice. And to do that, we also need to change the Y values in this situation. And that's because, let's take a look. If we're shooting in the minus 100 area, then if we are in the negatives for the width of the ice, assuming that the middle is zero, then we're shooting from the left side. Now, if we're shooting towards the positive 100s and we're in the negatives, the shot comes from the right side. So what we have to do is when we change this minus 100, 
when we pretty much convert this minus 100 over here to be over here, we also need to flip the y coordinate so that the uh, that the sides are appropriate and lined up right. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to go back into the data file now. Okay, so we have a choice to make right now, and that is whether or not we want all shots to be treated the same. In other words, we're not going to differ differentiate um, from a from a formatting standpoint on our graph between goals and just shots on goal. I think it's best to uh, differentiate between the two. It adds a lot of value. So if we're going to make that decision, then we need to segregate out the X and Y coordinates for goals and the X and Y coordinates for, for on-goal shots. And let's do that now through a couple of calculations. I'm going to right-click, insert a column here. I'm going to move it to the end just in case. Like next year, I might export the same data set, and then I can just paste it in here and all my calculations will work and my data visualization will work. I'm going to create four columns. And I, let's zoom out a little bit so you can see them all. I'm going to call the first one goal X, second one goal Y, the third one SOGX, which stands for shot on goal X, and SOGY. And I guess if you're thinking about this in, in, in basketball terminology, you might think of, um, I guess, miss shots and made shots so you could quantify misses versus makes versus just having every single shot type being uh look the same on a chart so to do this we need to, we talked about the x and y coordinates a little bit and the x coordinates are, are a little bit easier to deal with than the y coordinates because all we want to do with the x coordinates is like we said we want to change the negatives to positives so that everything occurs on one side of the ice. That's pretty easy. And the formula that we're going to do um, to get this done, it can happen in two ways, depending on whether or not you want empty net goals to be included. And for simplicity's sake, I'm going to have them uh, be included. And we can I'll show you how to deal with that later if you want to exclude them. It's, it's not too difficult um, based on the way that we're setting this up. This is a little bit different than my other videos in the way that we're setting this up and manipulating the information. So. To get the goals for x, I'm going to go ick equals, or the goal um, x coordinates, I'm going to go equals if type, which is the at type, equals, quote, g-o-a-l, end quote. So if the type equals goal, comma, we want abs, which is absolute value, capital abs, notice it's a formula. If I double click on it, a parenthesis will open the absolute value of x, or at x. And then I'm gonna close the parenthesis. And if that's not true, so this is what I want if the goal, if it is a goal. But if it's not a goal, comma, then I want na, na, and that's also a formula. It'll just put an na error in my calculation. Open parenthesis, close parenthesis, and close the parenthesis again. Click enter. So now everything that is a goal will have a positive x value. Notice this is actually minus 63. Now it's regular 63. And a positive 87 will just be its normal 87 for all the goals. And if it's not a goal, if it's on goal, then we're going to get an NA. And I can quickly copy this formula. I did control C and paste it in the SOGX. But now instead of goal, I'm going to change this to ON. Goal, so on goal, and I'll click enter. Then we're going to get the same thing for SOG. And let me just, while I'm here, let me highlight these and just so we know that these are calculations, highlight them in a different color. And now for Y, it's a little bit more complicated because, like we said in, in our PowerPoint, we need to flip the Y coordinates around for when, um, pretty much when the when the x value, when this x value is negative, we need to flip the y coordinates around. So the way that we do that, I'm going to say equals if, open parentheses, and, because now we have two conditions, and, and open parentheses. So if and, we can do our first one easily. If this equals, quote, G-O-A-L, which we've already done in our first one. So if the type is goal, comma, and x, this x value 
is less than or equal to zero. So if those two things are true, as a parenthesis, then comma, I want y times minus one. If those two things are true, I want y times minus one. Now, comma, I'm going to do another if and. If, open parenthesis, and, I'm going to do this kind of the same thing, but just a little bit different. At type, so if the type equals, quote, VOL, if the type is goal, and, comma, x is greater than zero. Now, if it's a goal and x is greater than zero, close a parenthesis, then I just want y. And then, so if neither of these things are true, essentially, if since we covered both ranges of x, less than or equal to zero and greater than zero, um, if this is not a goal, is pretty much what we're saying, comma, then we want an a. Open let me open parenthesis, close parenthesis, and let's kind of finish that off. So now what we've done is we've done the same thing that we did for x, where if it's not a goal, we have NAs. If it is a goal, then we get the, y, the, the right y value. And what that means is that if x is negative, we invert the y value. If x is positive, we keep it what it, uh, what it should be. I'm going to copy this formula, paste it into SOGY, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to change the goals to on goal. O-N goal and goal to O-N goal. So now we have all the data that we need to create our our chart. I'm going to create another um, another sheet. I like to keep my data visualization separate from my data entry. So I'm going to do this, and I'm just going to call this shot chart. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a insert chart. I'm going to create a scatter chart. If you've seen my body map video, it's it's a similar concept. We used X and Y coordinates on the body map to figure this out. And I'm going to go to select data. Uh, no, instead of selecting data first, let's format the chart area. So I'm going to go to format chart area, fill. I'm going to go picture, texture, fill. And it'll default to some sort of texture. Um, and you can change your textures here. I, I don't think I've ever used a texture background on a graph. But I'm going to insert a picture because that's what I want and I'm gonna insert it from a file. I have a file saved on my computer. It's, it's, this is what it's called. And all it is, is, is it's a half rank, like I went over in, in the PowerPoint. Um, so let me just make that bigger, um, certain size. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a transparency, because right now this is too bold for me and I want my data points to show up. I'm gonna set the transparency to let's say, I don't know, 50% for now. So we can kind of see through it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these grid lines um, or remove them from view. So I'm going to go to view. Grid lines is checked. I'm going to uncheck that. It'll just make things easier to see for me when I add my axes. Now, there are a couple ways to add axes on the chart. Right now, it won't let me add axes. That's because there's no data. So first, I'm going to right click on the chart, go to select data, and I'm going to add a new series. And the series name, this is going to be my goal. So I'm going to call it goals. Um, I'm not actually going to show the name of the series anywhere, but it's important. And when I select my X values, I'm going to click here, go to my 2015, 16 shots. And I have my goal X values labeled here. If I click on the first value and I hold down for me, it's control shift. And, and then I click down arrow, or you can, I'll, I'll do that the first time, control shift down arrow. It will select everything in my table. And that's actually probably an important thing to note. First, this is a table. I created a table out of the data. That's extremely important uh, for this to work. If you don't have it, if this is not formatted into a table, nothing is going to work. So at least in the way that we design it. Now I have all my X values selected. Now for my Y values, I'll do something else. This is the other way um, to select data without any keys uh, or maybe one key is one, you could drag it all the way down. That's going to be really annoying and long because there are 74,000 rows. I can click on the first cell. I'll, I'll go all the way to the bottom of the chart, hold down shift, and click on the last one. 
And notice the range is the same. It's two to seven, three, nine, seven, one. Same thing here, I'll click okay. Now, theoretically, I have my first, let me just make sure that I did that right. Oh, no, I didn't. So um, hold down shift, click on the last one, because I'm explaining things too much. Click OK. Oh, sorry about that, guys. All right, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to do it. So this is going to be blank. I'm going to click on the first value, scroll to the bottom, hold down shift, click on the last one, click OK. Now all my data points show up in there. Now I'm going to add another series, and I'm going to call this SOG, which is shotgun goal. And for my X values, I'm going to do the same thing that I did for the goals, but choose the X values. So for SOG, X, which we have labeled here, I'll click on the first cell, control shift down arrow. Out of that, I have those values. Now for the Y values, go up here, control shift down arrow, and click OK. And all as long as you have all your values selected um, and the, the range is the same number of rows, you'll be okay. I'm going to click OK. Now this looks like a mess, and it should. Um, now I'm going to change my axes on my chart. I know that it goes from 0 to 100 now, not 0 to 120. So I am going to right-click, Format Axis, from 0 to 100. And notice it fills all the way to the end of the ice rink. And now with these values, the Y values, we know that it goes from minus 40 to 40, like we kind of already discussed. So I'm going to go minus 40 as the minimum, click Enter. And notice you'll see this reset kind of pop up. That means it's a absolute value that was set. And then I'll set this to 40. And this looks pretty ugly. Who the heck knows what's going on? The next thing that we're going to do is build is uh, this is actually a really quick way to interact with it. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to, and all I'm doing is I'm clicking delete. I'm removing the axes. I'm going to click on any of these values here. Right click, format data, data series. And now what I'm saying is that what do I want these markers to look like for shots on goal? I'm going to go to marker, marker options. First thing is I don't want to, oh wait, well, we'll go through that in a second. No fill built in, and this is the way that I'm going to do it. You can format it any way that you want. I don't want them to be circles. I want them to be X's. So I'm going to make them X's, and I'm going to make the color, that's the border for X's. Whoops. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to make the color, let's just say black. No, like I'm black X's for now. And maybe they're a little bit bigger. Maybe I make them seven size for now. Now that still looks like a mess, doesn't it? So we're not going to be able to see anything for a little bit. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my table and make sure that you're clicked somewhere on the table. Now I'm going to go to Insert and click on Slicer. And this is me adding the filters that I want to add to look at the data in different ways. For me, I know that I want a team. I want a player. I probably want the type. Um, I want the I want the manpower and I want the period. So I'm going to click on Slicer, and you'll see a list of the things in your table pop up, or the columns in your table. I said I want the type, I want the shooter team, maybe I want the opposing team too, a player, period, manpower. That's, that's honestly, that's a lot of filters, but that's okay because I want them. I'm going to click OK. And these are not filters that come, these slicers, the way that these look, I designed these, so they kind of, you won't have these. You might, yours might look like this, um, and you can design your own. Um, it's, it's not too difficult to do. Um, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down control and click on all of these. All I'm doing is selecting them all, all the slicers that I want. Wait a minute. Hold down control C or control X or cut them. We don't need them on this page, and we actually don't want them on, that, on this page. When I did Control X, it's taken a little bit. I'm going to go to my shot chart and click Control V. That's pasting the slicers in. Here are all my slicers, which are essentially filters. 
let's back out. I think there's going to be like a 90% type of deal um, for its size. I'm going to make this bigger. And now, well, what we have now is we have the ability to interact with our dashboard. So I'm just going to pick a random player. I don't know who these guys are. Um, click him. All right, he just has X's. That's not good. Um, I want someone else that doesn't have X's. Okay, now these blue circles. These are the goals. I'm going to click on one of the circles, right-click, Format Data Series, and now I'm pretty much telling Excel what I want the goals to look like. I'll stay with built-in. Let's make it seven size, just like the X's. I'm going to go Solid Fill, and let's make it – or maybe Gradient Fill. That'll look cool, uh, maybe. I don't know. Um, let's remove that. Let's remove that, and let's just do some sort of green type of, type of deal. Green to green, and let's make one of them maybe like darker green. Maybe one of them more colors, make it a little bit of a lighter green. So there's some range. And oh, let's make this radial. I, I really don't know why I'm doing this. Um, but now I just need to remove the border, at least for the way that I want them to look. Now I have green circles as the goals. Okay, so now I actually already have what I want. Um, I can organize this maybe a little bit differently. I can remove the grid lines, remove these grid lines, and I can set up the slicers to interact in a way that I want them to. But essentially, I mean, we're, we're already done. Um, I'm going to add some data to this too. So I'm going to merge these two or maybe merge these four columns together and I'm going to call this filtered data because I want to display some data about this too what I'm filtering down to and you'll see what I mean by that in a second I'm going to change this font to band script because that's what I've been using make cells uh, the size 14 here Let's bring that up and now maybe I'll merge these two and I'll call these these are the goals here is the shots on goal and the last two here, maybe I'll say this is the distance because we have that distance variable. So I'm going to highlight these, make that the band script thing, band script font. Let's make it 14, make it nice and big. Um, and now what I want to go in here is I want the number that I filter down to to go in here. So right now I have one player selected. You could probably count the number of goals, probably not the shots on goal, but I'm going to merge this. I'm going to select these two, I'm going to merge this, I'm going to select these two, and I'm going to merge this. And I'm going to use a formula called subtotal, which essentially what it does, well, let me take a step back. When I click on things on these filters, this filters my table down. So, and what the formula subtotal does is it takes a total of, or it can take the total of things that um, are filtered down in a table. So, I'm going to do equal subtotal. And I want a count. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to count the number of goal X's that I have to count the number of goals that a player has. So I'm going to do count, comma, table one. That's the name of my table. Open bracket. I'm going to type in goal, goal X. Because what I did here is that only goals that are scored have an X value. The other ones have an error. So this will give me the number of goals that are filtered down to. And I'm going to close the square bracket, close the parenthesis, click OK. So what this is telling me right now, let's make this the band script, and let's make it 14. What this is telling me right now is that this person, in whatever I filter down to, has 22 goals. And now I happen to know that in this season, um, Alexander Ovechkin had 52 goals, including empty net. I think he had 50 um, without empty net goals. But in any case, I am going to remove this this player, remove that filter, and now this is how many goals were scored over the entirety of the season. Alex Ovechkin, he's on the Washington Capitals. I'm going to click that. Now this list is going to be filtered. Well, we're going to deal with this in, this in a second, but I want you to notice something. See how there are all these other players available to select? Um, there are going to be certain things that we do that make this a little bit more streamlined. But where is he? Just to make sure that it's working. He should have 52 if I click on him. There he is. So he has 52 goals. 
And those are all the green dots that you see there. So now what I'm going to do, and these are all the locations that he has, has shot from. And we can quickly notice a trend, um, the number of shots that he shoots from here. He's kind of infamous um, for shooting from this area, especially on the power play. We actually kind of, uh, I'm interested right now to see uh, manpower 5v4. <laughs> yeah, that's a, uh, there's not a lot of variety in where he shoots from on the power play. But anyways, um, so I have the goals. I'm going to copy this formula, and I'm going to paste it here. And instead of goal X, I'm going to do SOGX. Now, this is the total shots on goal that, that whatever the filtered down data has. And I'm going to copy this formula, and I'm going to paste it in the distance, too. But actually, well, let's do this over, because subtotal, what we're going to do is we want not the count anymore. Right now we're counting things. Now we want the average. Because what I want here is I want the average shot on goal or average distance of my filter down list of goals and shots on goal combined. So I just want the average comma of table one, open square bracket, D-I-S-T, distance. Close a square bracket, close a parenthesis, click enter. Let's make this a little bit more digestible number and let's um, make one decimal. So what this is telling me is that Alex Ovechkin, his average distance of his shots, including goals and shots on goal, is 33 feet. And if I just click on the goals here, click on this goal here. Now the shot on his average distance for just his goals is 20.6 feet. So I hope that that makes sense so far. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through, I'm, I'm going to unfilter everything. I'm going to go through some options that make this, we're going to organize this a little bit and make it a little bit more pretty um, to work with. So you could do this a million different ways. Oops, to, to, to be honest, um, I'm going to set it up this way. I'm going to have a, sh I'm going to have the team over here and in each slicer, you can manipulate the number of columns it has as, as well as a lot of other things. Uh, for this slicer, I'm going to make the columns up here. I'm going to make it two. And then, so I'm going to have the shooting team here. I'm going to have the against team here to manipulate. And I'm going to make it the same size, more or less, and we can play around with this later. Again, I'm going to do two columns, and I'll play around with this in a little bit. Players, I'll put all the players beneath here, um, and maybe I'll make it five, uh, let's go six columns, and maybe this is a little bit wider, maybe these are actually, um, maybe these are, yeah, maybe I actually have three I actually have three teams here because the, my primary workflow is going to be the shooting team and and the players on that team. So maybe I'm going to select both these slicers and let's move them up a little bit, move the players up a little bit. Um, essentially, I want all the players on a given team to show up at once. So... See if I, I'm just organizing this so it's an all-in-one kind of snapshot here. There, that looks pretty good. Okay, move these over. Move these over. And let's do this. So we got this. We got the type. We got the period. And we got the manpower. Let me, period, maybe I'm going to have five columns. I change that up there. And I don't know how there are five periods in here. Double, there must be maybe there's playoffs, um, double overtime, uh, or, some, or shootouts. I'm not sure what's involved here. Um, and let's do a couple of let's do manpower again. I made it four columns just so it's a little bit more easy to digest. And maybe let's move these down. Maybe I have something up here that kind of says. Let's just call these um, let's call them condi conditional filters. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. Right now, I'm just kind of messing around. 
Transcript, uh, 14, it's there. Cool. All right, cut these. Maybe this, let's say, narrower column. Let's say three. Let's do this here. I'm going to remove the border from this chart. Right click if I can. Uh, format chart area. Go to the border. No line. Now there's no border around this. And you know, maybe this here I kind of um, I organize a little bit better. I'll put some some borders. Maybe this filter data I'll make nice and bold, and I'll make it this kind of gold color. Maybe this I'll make it bold, and I'll make this gold color and um, goals here. Let's let's do this. Let's make these bold, and so I could maybe it's like dark blue, and make it white, and these can be, I don't know, gold or I don't know. I'm just I'm, I'm just messing around right now with um, with some colors. And then what I can do is I can change the colors or you can use any colors for any filters you want. I'm going to make this red so it segregates from the shooting team. And let's make these conditional filters um, a different color like that. Uh, cool. We got a cool little dashboard thingy going on here. It's looking pretty good. And let me see. So for the shooting team, I'm going to right click, go into the slicer settings just so we can kind of see what this looks like. You can display a different header. Um, you can sort it in different ways. Um, you can hide items that don't have data. For this, I always want all teams to show up personally. For players, though, I don't always want all these players to show up, even if I click on, like, let's say I click on the Coyotes. Um, Maybe I just want the players on the Coyotes because this is just overwhelming. I don't even want to deal with it. Then if that's the case, I can right-click on this filter, go to Slicer Settings, and click Hide Items with no data, and click Enter. Now it's a filtered list to just the team, and if I click on a different team, the list will only display players on that team. And maybe I put make five columns instead. It looks like I have a little bit of space there so that I can actually like read the players' names when I click on a team. And for against team, let's go to the slicer settings. Again, I don't, I want to hide items with no data. So this team played all these teams. But if I pick on, click on a player that maybe doesn't play that often, see how this list changed? He might have not played against all these teams. I don't really know. This player has only played against four of those teams. So it's just narrowing down my selection options, which makes things less overwhelming. Manpower, I'm going to do the same thing. Actually, all three of these, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to right-click, Slicer Settings, and say Hide Items with No Data. There are a lot of manpower conditions, and I doubt that these are present in a, in a lot of situations. So let's go through a couple scenarios now just to figure out what this data means. And remember, we have, our, we have some data here that, tells, that gives us a little summary. So I... I'm I'm Ranger New York Rangers biased. Pick on the Rangers. In this season, they scored 239 goals. They had 2,202 2, shots on goal at an average distance of 35.9 feet. Both of these items included. Now, oh, that's the Islanders. <laughs> All right, so now I'm on the Rangers, and now this is the data for the Rangers. Okay. Now, if I click on goals only. This was the average distance from all their players uh, for the goals scored. Now, if I click on on goal only, here are all their on goal shots. And here's the average distance for all those shots. Now, I'm going to uncheck both of those and just click on goals. And let's quickly see a period breakdown here. Let's click on the first period. So the Rangers scored 66 goals in the first period during the season. What about the second period? They scored 71 in the second period, and they scored 92 in the third period. Now, let's remove this period filter, or let's keep this on. So they scored 92 goals in the third period, but what about just when it's been five on five? Only 58. There's a significant reduction there. And what about five on four when they're on the power play? They had nine. 
And what about on the penalty kill? Four are on five. They had four. Okay, great. And here are all the players that scored goals in that situation because we have this filtered down kind of list. And if I went to five on four, here are all the players that scored goals in the power play situation. So let's undo these filters. And let's select a player. I don't know who I want to select. I like Zook. So here we have Matt Zuccarello on the Rangers. These are his goals and his shots on goal, and that's his distance. Now, let's see how he did or how he fared against the Calgary Flames. He probably only played one game. Um, he had one goal, and the goals aren't included in the shots on goal, but you could make a metric to say that goals are also shots on goal. Not the purpose of this right now. He essentially had two shots on goal. One of them was a goal. And we might as well just do it. So the uh, so how are we getting this data? What we're doing is we're filtering a table by clicking on things here, these slicers. And the goals are the count of the number of the goals that someone scored, and the shots on goal are the count of the number of shots on goals that someone had. And these two things are segregated. But what we can do is if we want the shots on goals to the shots on goal to include the goals, we can simply just do a plus sign after this formula and click on the cell that, the, that are represented in the goals. If I click enter, now we we have Matt Zuccarello against Calgary Flames. It looks like they were taken in the third period only. Um, he had two shots on goal and one of them was a goal. So that's a quick way to do that. And I said I was going to talk about talk about empty net stuff also, and I'm going to do that. So maybe I'll just do it right now. And I'm just reformatting filters a little bit because what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in an empty net filter. You know what? Maybe I make this a two-column slicer, this type. I'll make things a little bit easier. Do that. Here we go. Let's move that up a little bit. And I'm just making room for, for an empty net filter that I'm about to go get. So the way that we add another slicer is I'm going to go to the table, click anywhere inside the table, go to insert, and click on slicer. And I'm going to have all my options here. We could add other things if we wanted to, too. I'm going to click on EN. That's our column that identifies whether or not the goal was an empty net goal. And now we have a slicer. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to do control X, which is cut. So what that's going to do is it's going to delete it from this page, but it's going to copy it. You can copy it and then paste it and then delete it, or you don't have to delete it if you don't want to. And I'm going to control V or paste it in here. And I'm going to make it the same width, give or take. I'm not going crazy in depth on this. I'm going to make it two columns. So what this is telling me is it's saying it, it's it's letting me segregate empty net goals from non-empty net goals. And let's keep on going here. So I'm going to make this slicer the same color by clicking up here as these other ones down here. Maybe I'll move this one up just a little bit to have some better spacing. And I, I don't know why I do this, but I just need to, I just need to do this. So I'm going to click on all these slicer, or I'm going to click on this one because this is the width that I want it to be. The width is 2.9, maybe I make it 2.1. And then I'm going to click on all these other slicers and make their widths 2.1. So they're all the same width as this one. And then I'm just going to kind of line them up a little bit better using my arrow keys and various other things. I don't know why I feel like I have to do this. But okay, so that looks a little bit better. Um, and now where are we going here? So let's go back to Matt Zuccarello. All right, this is how we did against the Calgary Flames. And if we want to know how we did against the Calgary Flames and the Carolina Hurricanes, I can hold down the control key and click on Carolina Hurricanes. And now what we're seeing here, he had three goals and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven shots on goal against those two teams combined in this season. None of them were empty net goals. That's why it's, why it's like that. And what we could actually do, I'm going to do this really quickly. I'm going to right click on this filter, and we've done this before. Go to slicer settings, and I'm going to say hide items with no data. Click enter. Now we notice true isn't even an option because in this scenario, Matt Zuccarello did not score any empty net goals. Okay, now, now what if we said, you know what? We're not just interested in him. We want to know how his line played in those two games. So I don't know who Matt Zuccarello actually played with, but I'm just going to pick two guys. And similarly, or 
I can do this in two ways. I hold I held down control to select another team here, but you can click on this icon here, right? It's a multi-select icon. And when I click on that and it's yellow, I can click on other people and they'll just be added to the mix. So let's say I want to know how these guys three these three guys did together against these two teams. That's a way to do that. And I can unclick them also. And if I click on this again, now it's back to single select. So if I click on a person, it'll just change the person. But similarly, I'm back on Matt Zuccarello now, bouncing around. If I hold down the control key and click on these two guys, it still works. The same thing happens. So this is, I guess, Chris Kreider, Derek Stepan, and Matt Zuccarello against the Calgary Flames and Carolina Hurricanes in 2015-16, scored five goals on 31 total shots on goal with an average distance of 28.8 feet. That's what we're reading there. But now let's go through one other example um, to just, again, demonstrate some of the flexibility and functionality of this. So I just removed all my filters. And as you can see, there are a lot of options, a lot of things that we could do here. I'm going to select the Washington Capitals because I'm going to look at Alex Ovechkin. And he's right here. When I click on the Capitals, this list filters down. Now I select Alex Ovechkin. So over the course of the season, he scored 52 goals. And let's just put the goals on just so we can see him. He scored 52 goals, an average distance of 20.6 feet against everyone that he played against. And now I'm going to click blank for empty net. And when I do that, notice two of the goals go away. So now we've just removed empty net goals from the, from the equation entirely. And this might make more sense if I uncheck this or clear this filter. Now I'm looking at the entire Washington Capitals team. And if I click true here, now we can see where all their empty net goals were scored from. And there are a lot of them. There are 14. So that's a lot of goals. And that can throw off um, our distances and our data. So now we have the opportunity to just look at non-empty net goals. Let's go back to Alex Ovechkin. And let's include his on goal here. And again, I'm going to hold down control and click on that. Now, this is pretty interesting. It looks like he shoots a little bit more on the, on the left side than the right side. And I'm going to click on five on five because I just want to know about even strength. And now it gets a little bit more even. Well, that's interesting too. What about just when he's on the power play? Click on five on four. Now that's even more interesting because we see a trend here and this is what happens when you're an amazing player and the team is really good is if we're looking at this data, we kind of know exactly where he's going to be and what he's going to do most of the time. Well, we definitely know where he's going to shoot from more or less. And sometimes you just can't stop it. So, but at least it gives you, it gives you an idea. Of, of what's going on and what the trends are. And now if we go back to five on five, we can say, you know what, we're just concerned about Alex Ovechkin, five on five, where is he, where is he gonna shoot from? How's he gonna do? And we play similarly to, let's say, the Chicago Blackhawks. So let's look where he, shoot, where he shot against that team over the season. And then, you know what, you know what team also plays like the Blackhawks and like us? is the Tampa Bay Lightning. So I'm gonna hold down control and click on Tampa Bay. And now it kind of gives you an idea, five on five, where Alex Ovechkin is going to shoot from, I guess, or has shot from, from comparing against teams that play like like you, which might give you an idea of, you know, where he's likely to take shot, shots from when he plays against you. That's something you're interested in. And this is just an example, again, illustrating some different functionalities here. Um, and maybe you're just concerned about Alex Ovechkin and TJ Oshie in the first period and what they're going to do. And now you have it here. Again, there are endless ways to kind of divvy this up. Um, I hope this video is helpful and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.